<laughs> and as what he knows, there's a ritual in jujitsu when you oh, lever up God. when you level up belts yeah, where you have to get beaten or grappled by all the higher belts. Imagine the ritual for getting your black plug. Did you ever, everybody's <laughs> walking toward you like an old cowboy. Yeah. Did you guys do the thing where they beat you with the belts? Yep, you take your so the people who don't know jujitsu. Yeah, when you get promoted in jujitsu, you have to run a gauntlet of all the other people in your class. You take off your kimono, so you just have your bare skin exposed, and you run through people who are all whipping you with their belts as hard as they can. Oh, that's cool. We didn't that do sucks. that. We did. What, the, it, what they did is they spent some period of time. It wasn't long, like two minutes, with everybody back to back to back to back, and that was a that was all we. Nothing did. like a shark. gauntlet to build the team spirit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it works in fraternities. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I was in a fraternity. You told me. How was you your fraternity? fraternity? You it wasn't it? bad. I was at UCLA, uh -huh. so it was all academic y like spineless fucking pussy kids who had four point two GPAs and were on the debate team in high school. So there was very little hazing. I don't have anything too interesting. How did to you get there? Were you also a spineless four point oh GPA? No, I had a two point three in high school. I was a mess. The way the back door into any respectable university is you okay. just go to community college and apply yourself for two years and you're in. I love that idea. You probably save $30,000, too. You save a lot of money. Not that the UCs are super expensive. Yeah, I, I think. I thought about it afterwards. Yeah, I mean, going to a private school, a college, and spending forty grand is retarded. And I'm so glad I didn't think that would have been a good idea. But, you yeah. know, you're still right. It's, you still save a shit ton of money. Nobody knows or cares where you went to school the first two years. Yeah, that is true. True facts. But there, there must be a story or two about the frat life. That stick I've, out a little bit, right? I've got some frat stories. My favorite frat story is when me and three other guys heard this other fraternity was going out of town for the weekend. Everybody in their house was going away to Palm Springs for a date party. All mm -hmm. their guys in the frat were paired up with members of a sorority. They get on a chartered bus. They go an hour and a half away into the desert. So what we do is we go over there, this little commando party in the middle of the night. We're all piss-faced drunk, too. We hop over the fence into their backyard. We instantly, with a can of gold spray paint, start drawing dicks. I think somebody drew a swastika, which is unfortunate. This was not designed to be a hate mission. It was just designed to be common vandalism. <laughs> Tell me more about your hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we found a kid with the last name Goldstein, and we beat him in the... No. So we get into the backyard. <laughs> We Happy find Hanukkah, their back punk. <laughs> <laughs> it was May. We find their back sliding glass door completely open. The first thing we do is we go inside. We find a couple of fixed speed bicycles, take them out into the backyard, shot put them over the fence into a construction yard that was behind their house. Okay, we get a kick out of that. We go back in, get a big flat screen TV, heave ho, heave ho it over the fence. That's gone. So now we're starting to think, how can we up the ante here? We find a common garden hose out back. We snake this thing in through the glass door, pull it way deep into their den area of their basement, turn on the hose full blast. And then we leave. We go back to our party. Jesus Christ. You One of our like buddies was on. Dude, I'm being very careful not to say the name of this house. Oh, fuck. And this was also it's the one that got flooded. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one with no TV and the swastika. It was about a decade ago. And if anybody asked, I'll just say I heard this story secondhand that I'm reciting it as if it was my own. I'll testify. Maybe <laughs> I'll get, maybe I'll get some credit for that. <laughs> well, I'll have, I'll have my own jail stories to tell. But we had a buddy. I had this buddy, Umber, who was in intra-fraternity council. And that was like the governing board of the fraternities. The lady who's in charge of this was this big fat woman. She tells him on Monday... Wow, you're not going to believe this. The most thorough act of vandalism I've seen take place at this school occurred over the weekend. Thorough. Some, hool <laughs> some hooligans left a hose running in X frat house's basement. It was 48 hours before they got back from Palm Springs, and it cost $14,000 worth of damage to the house. Three separate kids had to move out and find new lodging because the mildew situation was so gnarly down there. <laughs> Well, congratulations that was my mark on the up. thoroughness. It was thorough. <laughs> I, we left no vandalism stoned unturned, this Woody. a terrible thing you did. <laughs> I've never done anything so awful. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Who here has done something as awful as what Danny just told us? I mean, it is funny. Yeah. 
cool. Why did you do it? Not what, what, at all. Why was it done? What was the motivation? There was absolutely no motivation other than there was a house. We heard they were gone, and we were intoxicated. That was it. 